Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmom8.wordpress.com. So I decided today that I was just going to do something simple and I was going to do a quick flip through of a Becca math because I love it so much. It has worked so well with my littles. I'm not going to do an extensive review. I just wanted to just page through them so that you guys can get an idea of what it looks like inside. I know that a lot of people are really curious about it. So I'm just going to flip through a little bit for arithmetic one, two, and three. Now arithmetic one and two, I will let you know, my kids have been doing these this year. So you're going to see that the pages are done. Arithmetic three is actually brand new. So that one will not be so war torn as the rest of these. Um, but I do have a third grader using arithmetic three this year. It's just that the one that I'm showing you here is my second graders um, book for next year. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you arithmetic one. And I want to point out that I actually have my kindergartner doing this book this year. Because when I looked online at some of the samples or what was included in a Becca kindergarten, um, I thought that it would be too easy for her. It was mainly things that she already knew. So I decided to just jump ahead and do arithmetic one with her this year. And she's been doing really well with it. The only difference with her doing her math and my other girls who use a Becca is that my older two will do both sides of a page for their math. While my kindergartner, I'm only having her do one side of the page for now because she's still, she's only five. And I have her doing first grade math and I just don't wanna work through it too quickly for her so that you know it confuses her, gets her frustrated. So anyway, as you can see, a lot of times we do tear the pages out, but I just want you to get an idea of what a Becca math is all about. So one thing, let's, let's find a page that is not quite so wrinkled. <laughs> anyway, so what you'll notice is that there are a variety of different styles of math problems on these pages. And that is one thing that I absolutely love about a Becca because the other math curriculums that we have used are usually, you know, it will have all addition on the page or all subtraction. And then once they start learning about, you know, how to tell time on anal analog clocks, it will have all analog clocks. And then when, when they start learning about measuring, it's all measuring. And what ends up happening is the kids don't retain the things that they learned earlier because they keep switching to new concepts. What I really like about a Becca math is that there is built-in review in all of the pages. So, you know, if, if you look right here, we have money and then we have addition and then we have place value. Now, if we go say to this one here, we have um, place value, finding the greatest number, counting by tens, sums and differences, and ordinal numbers, you know, like starting at the left and coloring the fourth snake green. And besides that being really, I, it's a much better option for my kids because it really helps them to remember what they're learning because they have this, as I said, built-in review on all of these pages. It also adds variety. You know, it it's pretty boring, I think, even for adults to do a page, you know, of 40 addition and subtraction problems. Um, imagine a five-year-old or a six-year-old having to do that. So I think that just going from one section to the next is, it, it's just an easier time of math for your kids. So, you know, up here we have count by ones, write the missing numbers, write the numbers that come between. Um, and that is really what the entire book is like. It all has that built-in review, learning different concepts on all of the pages. But, but of course, you know, they get more and more advanced as time goes on. You see right here, they're, they're doing telling time. But again, you do, you have that variety that will constantly remind them of what they have learned about. And I absolutely love that. So again, this is the first grade book. And as you can see, we haven't gotten very far in it simply because at first this year we were using the um, 
Oh my gosh, I can't even. Math seeds, sorry. We were thinking, of, we were using math seeds earlier this year. We were using both the online um, program and we were using the workbook. And that worked out really well for her at first. But what ended up happening was that that also got just a bit too easy for her. And that was when I decided that I would just, since Becca was working so well for my second and third graders, I thought, well, I'm just going to get her a Becca first grade. And so we did start this after the school year had already started. Plus, since I only have her doing one side of the page, it is taking her longer than it normally would, um, which is fine because she's not in first grade yet anyway, you know, so we can just continue using this book next year and she'll be right where she should be. So anyway, so, and if you look, here we are in first grade, they're already learning tens and ones. Um, and the funny thing is that my second grader, she is doing harder math in her Abeka book than my, my older kids did Liberty Mathematics. And my second grader is doing math that they were learning in like fourth grade. So... Anyway, so this is, I'm just going to show you a few more pages of this, just so you get the idea. And, sorry, that's my daughter's pages that she folded and put back there. I also wanted to show you that they do also have little review problems. So if you want to do drills with your with your kids, you have this back here. I haven't done it with her yet um, just because I don't want to intimidate her. One thing that I might do in the future is maybe have her do maybe one row of them each day um, as a reminder. We'll just see. You know, I just play it by ear. If she needs it, we'll do that. If she doesn't, we won't. You know, that's the great thing about, about homeschooling. You just do what, what works best for your kids. Okay, so now we're into arithmetic two here. And as you can see, my daughter has been tearing out all of her pages. So she's actually at, at right here already. She's on page 139 now. And so you're not going to actually get to see the beginning of this book. But again, this isn't an actual review. I'm not showing you everything. I just want to show you what Abeka math is all about at this age. And again, as you can see for second grade, it is just that built-in review all the time. So here we've got fractions, sums and differences, measuring, um, greater than, less than, or equal to. And one other thing that I actually really like about Abeka is that it does incorporate other subject areas into it, which I didn't mention with the other book. But yeah, they, they will have poems in there. Um, in the in the Abeka math for first grade, a lot of times it would have animals and it would have the, the name of the animal underneath. So, you know, at the same time, they're learning about animals. As you can see here, you know, she's, she's also learning geography as she's doing her math. And, and that's right along with that, what I love. Oh, and music. Now, I don't know how to read notes, so I don't ever sing that to her. And I'm sure she's thankful for that. But yet we have that as well. And here we go again. You know that built-in review. Count by threes. Write the sums and differences. Write the census dollars. Um, measuring. So it's very, very similar to the first grade book. And, you know, I think just the fact that they do keep repeating these varying concepts over and over again, and they, they advance them a little bit at a time, but they do it in a way that it is not intimidating at all. Now, I've always, for math, had to just sit down right next to my kids to help them. And I don't know if it's my daughter or if it's the way that this book is written or probably a combination of both, but she doesn't even need me anymore. She just grabs her book and starts doing her math and that's it. So anyway, I'm hoping that you can see this okay. So here we go. Counting by fours, multiplication, finding the perimeter, adding and subtracting, dividing, see, and again, like I mentioned earlier, it really does add some variety to what the kids are learning. So that's second grade. And yeah, second grade also has the, the additional problems at the end. I think they do. Maybe not. 
Huh, because I, I know the third grade book does. But I actually don't see that in this one. That's funny. Anyway, so now arithmetic three. This is where it gets a little bit different. With um, first and second grade, I've noticed that there is no drill and kill in those. And there's not, I can't say that there's drill and kill in this one, but as you can see, it does start to get a little bit more monotonous at this point. And I very often will say that we will use a Becca math up until third grade. And then after third grade, we move on to CTC math. Um, and that is actually the reason because third grade is kind of that cutoff point where once you get past third grade in a Becca, it really does turn into that drill and kill effect, which my kids dislike. They completely dislike it and it makes them hate math. It makes them feel like they're not good at math. And I don't want that for my kids because I actually, I'm a numbers person. And I think that doing th this stuff is fun. Even when I helped my daughter with algebra, I was saying to her the other day, isn't this fun? We were factoring. And she actually thought that, that the factorization was fun. And, you know, it's because even with CTC math, like the earlier Rebecca's, it's not drill and kill. It's short lessons and, but it's not that you're not learning. It's that they're not expecting too much from you and they're not jamming too much into your kids' heads at one time. So anyway, so third grade math, you know, starts out very much the same. And again, still that built-in review, we've got um, subtraction, subtraction, adding and subtracting, subtraction. As you can see, that's where the monotony is starting to come back in. And telling time, though. They do have other things in here. They have measuring. They have word problems. And the reason that I actually didn't go right to CTC math at this age is simply because when when my kids are this age, they still really like to have like the worksheets and they like to have the coloring pages and they just like to have that hands on effect of math, which this does have that. But again, it's just I what I found this year with my daughter with third grade, Abeka, is that she was starting to get intimidated. She was starting to cry when she was doing it. Um, so what I actually have started doing now, um, I'm just going to show you here. We have subtraction, Roman numerals, multiplication, measuring, and more multiplication down there. But anyway, what I've started doing with my daughter is I will start circling problems for her to do on her pages. Now, she does do both sides of the page, but I will circle, say I might circle these two. And then I'll circle this one in the middle and I'll circle one of those. And she does not have to do all of her problems. And I'll circle that one and then I'll circle some of these for her. And it, it really does help. So, but what ends up happening is if I circle, you know, a couple problems for her, say if she would get this one wrong and I only had these two circled. What I will then do is I'll say to her, well, why don't you do this one that I didn't circle since you had trouble with the first one? And then she will work through a similar problem to get practice if she needs it. But so far, what I've been finding is that she is much more willing to do her math. Um, she's actually taken it upon herself that if I'm busy helping one of her siblings, she will take the book and she will start circling her own problems to do. And then she'll show me and she'll even say to me, mom, I circled the harder ones because I know you always give me those. So she, she knows the drill. And so it is, it is really, I'm, I'm sure you can see that it's evident that it is at this point that it does start to get a little bit more like a typical math book. But you know, it still has that built-in that built-in review. You know, that spiral-based approach to learning. So, you know, like here we have multiplication, Roman numerals, solving little puzzles like eleven minus seven times eight equals, and then adding and subtracting with Roman numerals. And so, I'm just going to page through this a little bit more just so you get an idea. And that is what the third grade math book looks like. And again, you know, that's that's what we do. We, we circle several problems on the both sides of each page. She does those. If she has trouble with them, she will do 
problems that I did not circle until she doesn't have difficulties anymore. And it's been working like a charm for us. So anyway, and I am going to look because I'm pretty sure that this one does have, that is, oh wait, yeah, they do. Maybe I just missed it in the second grade one. Because yeah, here are more practice problems. And again, I didn't use these with my daughter yet, but if I feel at one point that she is going to need them, I might have her do. I would never have her do this whole page in one day. Absolutely not. I think that at the most, I would just have her do one row at a, at a time just to give her that extra practice. But anyway, that is all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you will probably have to follow the link in the description box to Instagram and you can leave a comment on any of my posts there. Even if you have a question about this, it's absolutely fine because YouTube disabled my comments and still has not turned them back on. So right now the only options that we have really for commenting is if you just come over to Instagram and ask me the question there. And I'm totally fine with that. Also, if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave that link in the description box below too. Um, my Patreon patrons have access to monthly unit studies that I write, to monthly themed book lists. Um, depending on what tier you're, you're in, I do also have exclusive videos. Um, some of my patrons, depending on what tier you are on, will get um, my Harry Potter unit study ebook. And that's about it. Anyway, I hope you have a great day.